save every one of us. <laughs> they were they were snorting drugs when they did that. Movie. Hey guys, everybody was tired. Hey guys. Yeah, what's up, man? Just so y'all know, and let's go ahead and we are live in this bitch. <laughs> All right. Um, good evening, everyone, friends. You know, gamers, haters, fuckers. Whoever the hell you claim to be, or you may not want to admit that you are, welcome to the OGL. I think this is number seven. Am I right? Is this number seven? Lucky number I think seven. so. I'm not sure, dude. And tonight, I don't know who the hell's going to come in here. Um, you see who's <laughs> in here right now. It was just planned to be me and the two main guys, but if Ben, there was a direct today, which we're going to talk about in detail. Whoever the hell walks in, just we're gonna just go all out. <laughs> yo, try to get Poppy up in here, yo, for real. That way you, you uh, get the whole Hispanic vibe. Hold on, dude. I am trying to keep this shit an hour and a half or less. All right. <laughs> if I let Poppy here, it's gonna go four hours. He got shit to do, man. But shout out to no, Poppy 2K, by the way. Love it. Love his podcast. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to he's trying to increase the piece, and I give him credit for that. Yo, not for nothing. I'm about to bring my uh, individual thing back on my channel, so whoever's down for that, let me know in ahead of time. All right, well, you can go ahead and pimp that out, man, and um, let me go ahead and introduce uh, my panelists. Uh, first up, we got a... Oh, we got Kenoshi. Go ahead, Kenoshi. Hello, my name is Kenoshi Abamanito, and uh, I can't wait, to, can't wait to talk about random stuff, plus the direct. There you go. <laughs> Next, we got Red Fox. I think he's become a regular. The bastard is always on here now. I am always on here because, man, you just look. It's like coming home. You're just so friendly and warm. Great, 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 damn great uh, podcast host. And, you know, it's always good to have people who know what they're talking about and know bullshit when they see it and they're ready to break their foot off in its ass when they see it. What the hell? <laughs> Next up, we got Cream Sickle, known pre- previously as K H Anime. Now he's Neapolitan Ice Cream. Go ahead. Neapolitan Ice Cream. Yeah, what's up, you two? Let's get this thing started. And we got a very special guest, um, a guy I've known for quite a bit. It's been a while. The bass has been in the shadows, peeking in on people like some kind of peeping Tom or creeper. There you go, but, dude. <laughs> but we got, as one of the greatest quotes in movies goes, you're my ambassador, Quan Man. Yo, it's Quan Man Chu here. You know how it goes. I sit up here and say and do what I do. Whatever's clever. Let's do this thing. Yeah, I was hoping you said the whatever's clever part, man. <laughs> if you don't put that part in there, you're not the real Quan. There you go. Well, let's go ahead and just get the the obvious shit out the way. Nintendo Direct. You know, usually Shin Megami Disney Tensei say like, Crossfire Emblem for the win. <clears throat> I mean... That Direct was dog. That was, <laughs> I, I, I thought the Direct was fine. That was, uh, it, it was, I thought it was great too, and I had to go watch another five or ten times. They didn't sure. have any NX information, so fuck them. Yeah. Oh, God. Salty <laughs> tears I'm with my glass. I'm being I'm being Wait, I'm what? getting my glass for the salty tears. <laughs> <laughs> but how you know, and Red Fox mentioned this on the podcast he did today. I mean, sorry, not Red Fox. Uh, Act the Gamer Live. Um, but basically, <laughs> and I agree, the one part Nintendo dropped the mic on was the Metroid Prime Federation Force. This shit has happened, what, two, three years in a row now where the most controversial title amongst the Nintendo fan base and even those that don't even play Nintendo games is the one that basically makes the biggest impact positively. I mean, yo, Federation you, Force... I Federation mean, Force is lovely, yo. I'm going to be I honest mean, with it, you. If they would have showed that la- uh, at last year's E3... It would have been a complete turnaround, but I understand how Nintendo works. Same way with how Warriors. It looks okay in the beginning, maybe not that attractive. Then it, as time goes by and they start putting those textures on there, and you get to see more of the damn title, you then start thinking like, "Damn, this shit looks really good. It wasn't that right, bad right. as I thought people, it was." People, people are excited about Federation Force now. All of a sudden, some people, yeah. yeah. 
I'm excited uh, about it. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, I wonder they go take that and they change that org petition. Hell no. Well, anyone else cast your thoughts on Federation Force? I thought it looks it looks fine. It looks all right. I, hopefully, uh, you know, there's some online play. It'd be kind of nice to play with you guys. And, and, and man, what about that um that cameo from Tanabi? Yo, hold up a second. Grim's in here. Yo, what's up, Grim? What's up? What's up, Grim, man? What's up? What's up? So, did you watch that Nintendo Direct? I'm not sure if you did. Nah, I, I missed it. I had to go to go to class. Well, guess what the highlight was, dude? We just we're just discussing it right now. Metroid Prime Federation Force. Yeah, man. I keep telling people they should just rename it Prime Four and call it a day. Nah, it's a 3DS title. That's just not gonna happen. Yo, uh, they'll get over it if they did it. Like I said, I'm gonna sit up here and take a sip of my Captain Morgan's and be chilling and just ready to play my game when it comes down the line. They're gonna cry like little whiny kids, and I bet this is gonna be one of the highest selling Metroids ever. <laughs> Cause it's on the 3DS. Man, shit, it better be. I mean, we're talking about 50, 60 million 3DSs out there. Now, this game is not strictly for the new 3DS, is it? Mm. Um, I think it'll have features that are uh, like it'll play better on the new 3DS, but whatever. Okay, just make it sure. Yeah, they ain't saying anything about it. The only thing they say was SNES virtual console for the system. Yeah, what's up with that? Why why is that only for the new 3DS? What's going on with that? Well, now, well, well, from from what I saw, from what I heard in the um, direct, and I could be mistaken. If I am, I do apologize, but um. They said that it will have new 3DS exclusive features such as perfect pixel mode, which I guess you know you play the game in the original resolution. And I was thinking that that's what they meant by you know exclusive 3DS, but then later on it kind of seemed like it was strictly for the new 3DS. But I said, well, why would you make these games strictly for only about 10% of the 3DS fan base? They're trying to sit up here and grow it. That's what it is. What's the link? I already have, have all those games on the cartridges anyway, so having them to go is a plus one. But, well, but at my, the same time, some people like to sit up here and rebuy. Don't I, it's, you know? We get a habit of doing that. You know, we as fans, we we tend to but, do that. But you know what? As a person that has a uh, a game capture device, I can honestly say I prefer to have them on the virtual console of like the Wii or the Wii U because if I want to do game capture, I can. With 3DS, I'm not gonna send my shit out to someone so they can. I open it up and mod the shit to be, uh, be able to do game capture on it. Listen, listen, I listen. I understand. Say, uh, Hold up. Going could... with game capture, let me say something real quick. Going with game capture, Nintendo needs to be less stringent, okay, on people putting out Let's Plays and whatnot on their games because that is a very cheap form of advertising. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, just just to keep I mean, it real. I mean, dude. No, no. I mean, th- here's my thing, and I just made a post about this. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Just because you have a, a copyright claim, it doesn't really affect your channel. It even says their biggest day. You can still show your video. People can still see it. You just cannot monetize it. Mm-hmm. And what I've heard from you know some people like Ms. T on YouTube, and I know a few people that monetize, you don't get paid a lot to monetize videos on YouTube. I mean, it's very little. If you got a lot of subscribers like, you know, Boogie, then maybe it does make a lot of money for you. But most people that we that we know or converse with on YouTube don't have two, three million subs. Exactly. So my thing is, like Missy said, you're getting that seven dollar check a month from YouTube. You're actually going to, um, you know, basically blast the company because it deprived you of what? Let's say you, let's say you actually do it pretty good. They're, they're depriving you of what possible fifty to hundred bucks because you can't take that particular video and monetize it. Nintendo has did a copyright claim on a few of my videos. I have about fifty Splatoon videos and only about maybe I think five have copyright claims. But when they when I got the, when I saw that message they said you know you can't monetize. I'm like but I'm not monetizing so I don't care. But as long as people can see my content that's all that matters to me. Mm want that extra seven dollars. It's like you're bitching for something that can't even really get you a couple of Big Macs right now. I'm sorry, but to me, it, it, in other words, it doesn't affect me. I don't give a shit because you guys can see my podcast. You can see my videos and I post them online, even with copyright claims. 
So I don't give a shit. Like I hear I hear the argument people make. They're like, well, you know, this is free advertisement. And I understand that, but the thing is, is like the the little bit of exposure. If it's free, you should do it for free. Isn't really gonna help a, a company the size of Nintendo. Like it's just not. It's it like I mean, I understand your argument, but the little bit of, like, you know, it's like, well, you know, we're helping this free advertising. Like, but, I mean, like, I, I, I know people that spend money on advertising forums, and they spend buku cash, like, like, huge amounts of money, and the, the little shit you're doing on YouTube is not exactly going to make or break these companies. Like, like, do you honestly think YouTube coverage would have helped... Uh, the Wii U sell? Mm. It depends on because there have been games and uh, they have because of YouTube have uh, the oh, games yeah. successful. Really? So they gained a cult cool following because of YouTube. Yeah. Like, uh, like that, you had the let's yeah. plays. Listen, look, you had the let's plays of let's say uh, Zombie U. Yeah, that's okay? true. That's and, true. And, and they actually sat up there and made a decent amount of sales based on that. And as a result of you know you Ubisoft being so stringent, it kind of sit up here and killed all of that. You know what I'm saying? Killed the momentum. They could have sat up there and took advantage of that because they didn't really put some serious advertising dollars into that game, and yet complained that the fact that it didn't sell. Yeah. So why not take care? You know, sit up here and take free advertising when it's offered. Well, I mean, I I understand where you're going with the with the free advertising, but the thing is, is like. Like, in my mind, and this is just me, this is my opinion. Even I, this, you could co-opt it. You know what I'm saying? Well, well that's what they've done with the Nintendo um, uh, with the Nintendo partnership program. Well, I can understand that, but I'm just saying, though, in general, a lot of times they sit up here and do sweeping and, like, cross the board cutting out the putting yeah. of videos. Rather than sitting up here and doing the partnership program, they've That's... sat up there and done that, and that to me that is a mistake because that kind of sits up here and puts a kick in the throat in the community. You That's want, interesting because I've never heard to... of them cutting people's uh, cutting people's uh, videos. I've heard of them uh, taking the monetization, but not like like taking them down. Dep- or depending, depending is sometimes it, 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 and all the companies do this. Uh, um, Nintendo may be a little bit more known to do it. It just depends. Sometimes Nintendo won't do anything to you. Sometimes they just make it so you can't monetize. Yeah, they're they capricious. They're yeah, capricious. It, 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 and, Am I right? It, you, you could blame the YouTube system. I don't know the reason because YouTube will do just like boot through the algorithms of the system. It'll just like hit some shit. Yeah, King, King. Am I right? They tend to be kind of capricious. You can't sit up here and understand what they're gonna do from one day to the next. Quan, I'm stupid. You're gonna have to break that word down to some. Capricious. Terms, that means they they kind of flip flop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can understand that. You know what I'm saying? They they don't stay consistent. That's what yeah. capricious means. Thank you. I just like new word today. There you go. But, you know, there you go. That's pretty much it. You know, if they had a consistent platform, the way they handled things, then that would be one thing. But the thing is they're not consistent, and that's what leads to a lot of problems and a lot of strife between the community versus, you know, the producers of said content, you know? Yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah. And I say that they need to sit up here and come up with, you know, a platform where they remain consistent in what they do. Yeah, I can understand that. There, there, there definitely needs to be more consistency. But like I said, um, it's not like, like I'm not gonna say that's like the reason that a lot of like I don't, I don't think that them monetizing because at the end of the day, people get mad about that. But it, it's their, it's their shit. You know, people like yeah, I'm helping. Yeah, but they, they made the game though. I mean, you think you have a more claim on. A game being done because you wouldn't be able to do a let's play of a game if it wasn't programmed, and, right? And get and get this, I don't have copyright claims on my channel. I don't. So this is not me sitting up here and having a dog in the fight, as it were. Hmm. Um, and I, I, I did really videos of copyright claims on mine either. It's just you know not from Nintendo. Like I, I do have copyright claims, but not from Nintendo, which is weird because I. I do a lot of Nintendo videos, but whatever. <laughs> I actually plan on sitting up here and doing some videos in the near future on GOG games. 
I've actually I've had copyright claims from uh, not GOG but Steam. Oh God, Steam! Don't get me started. Steam is bad about that. <laughs> Steam is very bad about that. The thing is, you know, I just don't understand them. You know, especially because they they claim to be all about the consumer, but yeah, that's why I like GOG. If you sit up here and put some Witcher gameplay, they're not gonna sit up here and fuss with you too much. It's Lord Gaben. No, I'm joking. Yeah, you know, yeah. Don't get me started about him. People, people love Lord Gaben. I'm like, eh, he's all right. He's all right, but you know, he's a businessman like anybody else. Did you yeah. guys hear about the uh, controversy with uh, Dota? Oh Lord, what's going on with Dota? Oh, apparently they fired that guy. Yeah, they fired one of the uh, one of the people talking there, or one of the commentators. Dude, I'm telling you something right now. This just it's just ridiculous the way they do things and the way they handle things nowadays. I'm I'm just telling you the gaming community as a whole, okay, there should be a little bit of like a laxed attitude and a little bit of levity allowed, you know? Yeah, why do we take video games so damn seriously? Exactly. Everybody sure. tends to pitch a bitch and get these, like, whole console war things going on, and, and they get these attitudes going where that one one platform is better than the other, and then you have uh, these companies out here that kind of, like, uh, poke the bear. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the only thing that matters is that a company is making money. Cause then they can make they can take that money and use it to make games that you want to play. Other than that, if a game if a company is 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 making money to to make the games that I want to play, I don't care. Just do do. But here's the thing about that: there's a lot of companies out there that take advantage of the naivety of a player base yeah. and then take a game that you like and bastardize it. <laughs> and, <laughs> dude, I was about to say Mass Effect. You're, and you you're know a what? damn troll, man. You're a damn troll. <laughs> dude, 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 I, dude, me, I straight up troll. And I'll tell you the truth. I believe EA bastardized the games they touch. They I took did. my favorite franchise, Knox, and kept it in limbo. Sims... Knox is better no, I'm than just Sims. Saying look, yo, yo, Knox is better than Sims. We I'm could, say man, I'm we could, call we, it. Could, we could spend all day talking about the franchise that EA has basically destroyed. We could talk about The Sims, um, Knox, Knox, uh, uh, what was what, what was that other one that I love so Spore. much? Spore. Spore. Well, shit. Yeah, Spore. Oh, and there's another one, and I'm just forgetting it off the top of my head. Well, don't get me started on Mass Effect. A Dragon, Dragon Age. Dragon Age. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But before you guys go into that, which can go on for a long time. Yeah, we'd be we here all about, day. Yeah, we got to talk about the other thing that was oh so fucking awesome. Star Fox. Oh, and Star it's not Fox. delayed. It's not delayed. What are you talking about that? You know, Yo, and, game? and people, no, no, listen. People sit up here and started tripping over Star Fox, and you know what killed me about them? Tripping over Star Fox. They acted like you know the resolution was toned down or whatever. That's bull, dude. The presentation was beautiful, and then to see on top of that, they added Amiibo support to sit up here and bring the classic R wing for the fun of it. And you know what? Not just the classic art when they say you know, um, the music comes back, and also they say other special effects too when you um, do the amiibo. So yeah. if you look at like his weapon and stuff, like look, like, even the weapons like graphics and sprites changed. And I mean, they basically gave me what I wanted because I don't like everyone's like I don't want a Star Fox like the N64. I hate the N64 Star Fox. I like the original Star Fox, the dude, SNES dude, Star Fox. Dude, dude, that's my favorite. Look, look, before you sit up here, not the N64 Star Fox. The only thing I liked about that is the way they're handling the brand, you know, the branching paths. Oh yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Dude, dude, um, dude, 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 you you can't knock the N64 version because they well, sat up there and did a little bit extra. They no, did some the, fan the service. Reason, the only reason I don't like the N64 stuff, Star Fox is because just to me, and this is just me, this is, this is just me speaking for myself, um, to me it was a little too, um, it, like, it, it, they were trying way too hard to make it feel like it was a space opera, when to me Star Fox was always kind of like a knockoff of Thunderbirds, and Thunderbirds was cheesy. Oh, yeah, dude. 
I, Thunderbirds I, I, was cheesy. It was meant so to be cheesy. I, I see what you're getting, especially the way they sit up here and flip the mouth, the way they talk and everything. Yeah, it was, it was cheap. It was cheesy. I like that. Thunderbirds go. That's all I gotta say, dude. Yeah, it was it was cheesy. I, I I like I like that the original Star Fox was cheesy, but it had that hard rock uh sound to it. I like that. I love that shit. It dude, awesome. dude, dude, dude. Looking at another franchise that kind of sat up there and bastardized the original intention of the game. I look Conquer. at no, I look at Fallout. Oh, don't don't get me started with Bethesda's Fallout. Uh, dude, three, dude, three, dude. Out, three out of ten. And the reason why I go to Fallout is because I played Fallout 1 and 2, okay? Mm -hmm. Wasn't a big fan of, you know, tactics, but Fallout 1 and 2, to me, was the grand opus. Especially 2, especially if you played the Restoration Project. Did you like yeah. Brotherhood? I never played that one. Say again? Did you like Brotherhood? I think it was on PlayStation 2. I never played that one. No, sir. Oh. That that right there, I looked at the premise behind it, and quite honestly, it didn't fit the canon, so I couldn't bring myself to play it. <sighs> Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda's yeah, been but, messing up. But look, 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 look. Here's the thing: when they gave the work to Obsidian, and they sat up there and brought out New Vegas, that a good felt show. like Fallout. Yes, it, it was did. beautiful. It felt integrated into the universe of Fallout. We knew that Myron invented Jet. Exactly. Myron invented Jet. Some snotty-nosed kid that sat up there and had hookers thrown his way, and he was a piece of crap. Myron. Yep. But what did they do in Fallout 4? They claimed it was a pre-war drug. Yeah. And, and to me, even though I love Fallout 4 for the basic premise behind it, I found its lack of attachment to the canon a grave mistake. Well, I mean, that's the thing about Bethesda is that they, they buy really good franchises, and then they kind of, like, dumb it down to the point where it's like, this doesn't even feel they like... Could, they could do a retcon. Well, I mean, not do, even that. Do you they think don't... they could, like, uh, reboot it or something and put no, it no, in oh, their oh, own... Oh. Dude, dude, they could do a retcon. You know what that means? Retro, con you know, continuity. In other words, they can go back and patch it in such a way where they can correct their mistakes. Yeah, but that would take. No, well, no. Take what I was saying was like, let's say Bethesda. Let's put, say Bethesda took, which they probably should have done once they first got the IP, and basically let the fans know that this is our Fallout and how we're gonna create it. Do you think the fans would like that? Like if they came out mm, and said, we're, we're, dude, we're not going off of the original. Watch lore. this, Grim. Grim, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you like this, dog. I want you to do me a favor, and you know me as a gamer, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to play Fallout One and Two without any exposure to any other Fallout. Play them. Oh, that's then, impossible. I played the other ones already. So no, no, no. Well, no, no. I didn't say without exposure. I said play them. Notice, I didn't say about exposure. I said play them. Just play them. And you tell me where you see the connection in story. Well, not, and not only that, uh, before we get back to what uh, to, to the direct, um, play, them, um, play them as, like, notice how you can solve problems in multiple ways. Like, not every problem can, is solved exactly. just by shooting something in the face. Like and you feel like wow I'm a badass and I don't even need to pull my gun out and I can I can I can I can find a way out of this. That was my <laughs> biggest problem with four because even though I didn't play the original ones, I have uh well I only have two on Steam. I don't have the first one. Uh, even three in New Vegas had way more options to like. That's what I liked about Fallout is that I didn't have to fight. I could literally that's the whole uh, point. Talk my way out of something. Fallout 4, yeah, that don't really work. Everything felt like you gotta shoot your way out. And to me, that felt stupid. It dumbed it down, dude. It, it kind of took the essence of what was Fallout and threw it to the, you know, the wayside. Dude, not everything has to be settled gung-ho, guns first. Guns you, know, you know what probably happened? They spent enough time with that gun customization crap and said, oh, they're gonna use these guns. You ain't gonna I, talk you know, this I, I don't think so. I think, use this gun. <laughs> I think they created that that uh, Fallout 4 to basically reach a broader audience, but at the expense of making it really, really stupid. I mean, yeah. I, oh, I dude, it's so, and, and the way they handled the, 
and the way they handled the FEV, the Force Evolutionary Virus, which I mean, is Fallout part, Four is, is so really deep. stupid. It, Fallout Four does not follow the lore. And I, I, like and, and the thing is, let me tell you something. I own I own the Pip Boy version, so I put my money where my mouth was. I didn't just buy the cheap version and called it a day. I bought the expensive one. But um, uh, going back to Doctor Feelgood, um, I, man, I don't know, man. I forgot, I forgot we, we were having a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even like at this point. I don't even know. I have no idea. I don't know. Concerning like. You know what happened in the direct and what they set up there and presented to us. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a lot more solid than people give it credit because at least they conformed, you know, to the franchises that they had in question. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and oh this, God. And I forgot is, Mario Kart time was on. <laughs> pointless to even have fucking topics. Just talk about no, any and everything. No, 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 we were talking. Look, listen. No, no I'm overall, kidding. I, I'm no, trolling. No, I'm gonna keep it real. Overall, the direct was was pretty. I enjoyed it. Was it was solid. It was a solid direct. I would give it a B. I would. I hate giving grades, but I would give it a B. Um, could it have been like the only way they could have done it better was if Nintendo had totally broken with what they were gonna say, which they told us it was just gonna be shit that was gonna come out this summer. And I wish they would set up there and re-emphasize that instead of giving the impression that we're going to give big news. No, they. I mean, they gave some big news because I did not expect to see a Paper Mario. I mean, I I wanted to see a Paper Mario. What I was expecting. Dude, to see. I expected a Paper Mario. Come on, let's be honest. Now, now I saw some of it. How is is how's it going to play? Is it going to play the original ones, or is it going to play like Sticker Star? Is it going to play like? It's going to be a mix. It's a mixed bag, dude. It's a mixed bag. Yeah, it seems to be mixed to me. It seems to be mixed. But the thing is, it's not that bad, dude. You know what I'm saying? Concerning what Paper Mario is and the premise behind it, it wasn't that bad. The only thing that I got to say right now that I wish I would have had a lot more information of is Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. You mean Tokyo Mirai Session? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why would you reverse the letters? You just kept the old name, but I understand you know, that name is better for localization, probably. You know, but I, I, I will say this. I love the fact that this is the oh, first time that I could think of, and I could be wrong, that we have actually got a true Japanese import. When he said we're keeping a Japanese voiceover, I was like, that's good. Because yeah, that, that's, when y'all convert shit, it sound, it, 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 it's bad. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's rare nowadays to have Japanese voices still when it's, been, when it's ported over to here. But I also think it's oh, because they, 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 the Vita time. games get the Japanese voices. They don't get nothing but the Japanese voices because they're. But, they like, but, I, but so I think it's. it's but I think it's also because they didn't have time to. They didn't have time to translate that shit. You look at Xenoblade Chronicles X. The children did not want to delay this shit until next year. <laughs> they probably said, "Let's just bring this shit over and put English subtitles." Yo, let me tell you something right now. As far as Xenoblade. One thing about that sucker, you need a college education to sit up here and play that son of a bitch. They sit up here and put some they put some stuff inside there as far as the gameplay mechanics. Yeah, it, that game is like Xenoblade Chronicles X feels like it was made by the old school uh Squaresoft. Exactly. That's dude. what it feels like. This it, is you Squaresoft. Know what, you know what it reminds me of Bahamut Lagoon. Uh yeah, yeah. But it does it does kind of have a Except the dragons are your uh, skills. Exactly, exactly. Now you see what I'm talking about. The the sheer complexity that they had in their battle system is like ridiculous. But we shouldn't talk about that because people don't even know what Bob Malcolm is. (laughs) Yeah, they they basically got to sit up here and like uh, pirate that sucker to know what I'm talking about. And yes, I said pirate. I said pirate. That's right. Quan said pirate. The only reason I have Bahamut Lagoon is because I got the the Super Famicom version and ripped it, and then I uh, I uh, patched it and put it on the EverDrive. So, so you know what I'm talking about. That's a lot of stuff to do, though. Most people ain't gonna do that. You can get you can get translated versions of it. <laughs> Yo, dog. In other words, I'm talking old school. Yeah. 
But, I mean, I, I like Fire Emblem uh, Cross. Uh, well, I know they call it. What do they call it now? They gave it a new name. I forgot. They gave it a new name. Yeah, I would. I mean, except they should just call it Fire Emblem Cross Persona because that's what it is. <laughs> it's more Persona because Persona dealt with an elemental system, you know what I'm saying, compared to what Shin Megami Tensei did. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I like Persona, so. It's a moot point. Yeah, the Persona series was more like union, as far as like union uh, psychology and whatnot. It was interesting. It was a very interesting take. Yeah. Oh, snap. Anyway, yeah, I'm a I'm a huge. I I, I like actually to tell you the truth. I like Shin Mega, I like Persona a little bit better than um, your atypical Shin Megami Tensei. And I know what some people are gonna say. You bastard. <laughs> how could you like Shin? How could you like Persona over Shin Megami Tensei? I just do, okay. You're a dick. <laughs> yo, dude, yo, not for nothing. I mean, it is what it is, and I'm along the lines with Red Fox, so yeah, you know, call me, a, you know, a prick. Shin Megami Tensei is a little too hard. I'm just saying, it, it, it's a little too difficult to get you into. Enjoy, you, enjoy, oh. Oh. you enjoy that waifu crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the concept of you like being able to like um like I like how it has the little life simulator thing going on where you like hang out with certain people and ask them questions and like that's how you get better demons unlocked is that you actually have to like like make your relationships better and junk. I like that. I'm just glad that basically with this direct, we got the one thing that actually comes rare when it comes to Nintendo, but they've been doing better about it. We got actual release dates. Yeah, we did. I'm thinking like they're gonna say Shin Megami Tensei is gonna be like fall 2016. I was like, hold on, what? July 24th. And yeah, I, had, I, I let me go ahead and admit something. I think it's obvious to everyone in this podcast. You know, I have a crack addiction. And the fact that they say they're going to have some more drugs for me coming next month, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and mine too. This yeah, they got mine too next week. <laughs> yeah, when I saw that, I was like, oh, man, our, our Mario <laughs> crack addict is going to lose his damn mind with this yeah. shit. I'm not, yeah, because when Bill said, uh, oh, we got uh, speaking of Mario, make this a new update, I'm like, woo! <laughs> Yeah, I think I have like six hundred hours of platoon. He has like five hundred hours of Mario Maker. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And that lets me know that maybe for E3, it may be some paid DLC for for Splatoon. People keep saying that like Splatoon is done. This proves that they're not done with the game. <laughs> no, Splatoon, Splatoon has sold too much for them to just stop supporting it. Now they may be work, they may be working on Splatoon two right now for the next no, console. No. But it's cheap for them to make to release some new weapons or to make some stuff like that because they already have the engine. All they got to do is just a little stuff right there. You know? Yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm gonna sink maybe another hundred hours into it that month. But yeah, and I, I, I may actually go ahead and pull out my Mario Maker this month. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. <laughs> wow. Mario Maker. Wow, Doc. Wow, dog. You, okay, you, to the you viewers like out there, fucking minutes this guy, to the viewers out there, this guy, Neopolitan, does not understand that although I do have about 40 physical AAA titles for my Wii U, that I also have a wife, I have a life, I have a full-time job, I have a couple of side businesses, I don't have time to play these shits all day. Yeah, that's that's what I keep on telling people. They're like, man, you can play all this stuff. I have too many games to play as it is right dude, now. Dude, 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 listen. I'm a disabled veteran who doesn't even work, and I don't have time for all the games I play. Exactly. I mean, like, and with all the other stuff I'm doing, like, I got family. I got a girlfriend. I got a crazy-ass dog. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, Rebecca. What is your dog doing that? <laughs> I do have a crazy ass dog. She is. I love her, but she's crazy. Uh, is uh, she crazy or is she just needy? She's she's a bitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being facetious. She, well, she's a female dog, so. Dude, not for nothing, but I agree. Right now, I got a Shih Tzu, 
and she basically took the place of the Shih Tzu that I, you know, had that died last year. And she's one that I rescued from being in a shelter. And this little baby is high maintenance. But the, so you, what you really want to say, this little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's my that's my dog. She is I love her I, I, I love I, her dearly, but And I love my dog dearly. Listen. This dog, my wife is like, yo, she don't know how to act. She's this, she's that. We need to give her up and I'm like constantly no. Hold on, let me ask you something. Is your wife listening to this? My wife is asleep right now. Okay, I was I was just gonna say this guy didn't want her to hear, it, but it sounds like your wife may be a little jealous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the thing is, let me tell you something. I, I got this thing where I believe human beings, when you take an animal in your custody, you're responsible for that life. I'm a strong believer in that. I take it a little bit farther than that. For, for me, my dog, it, like, when you have a dog, like I don't know about cats, but dogs, that's like literally like you become, they become a member of your pack, they're, they're, they, which for a dog, that's family. Your dog is a member of your family. And exactly. once once you take make someone a member of your family, you gotta you know there's certain you have certain obligations towards them. Exactly my point, dude. Let me tell you something. Dogs, they take a very special place in the life of a human being, because these animals they tend to like ingratiate themselves towards you in a special way. They greet you when you come home. Yep. They're happy when you're there. They sit up here and basically make a whole celebration. That you're present in their life. A cat doesn't give a fuck. No, they don't. They really. I know people love cats. I, I know there there might be some cat people listening to this. Look, I know you love your cat, but for me, like my the only cat I've ever seen that actually kind of gave like was affectionate was um, my neighbor's cat. But her cat is one of those Savannah cats that like is really expensive and it's like. It acts more like a dog than a cat. Dude, let me tell you something. I had a cat named Teddy, and he was a Manx mixed with a tabby cat. And that cat right there, he died last year also at the same time that Jasper, my uh, Shih Tzu, died. And he, he was something special, dude. This cat would actually kiss you in the face like a dog. He would kiss you in the face like a dog. Yeah, but that's like the exception for a cat, not the, exactly. Not and the rule. He, he was very attentive. He he would sit there with you and whatever. I remember when he started dying, and the way his behavior was. He he was like like a dog. He wanted to hide from you. He didn't want you to see him die. Hmm. I don't mean to bring the cast down, but that's just pretty much how he was. He, no, I, I was about to say that's one of the signs that a cat is in pain, that they start getting – they, they tend to go off by themselves. Yeah, and the same thing with a dog. A dog – I remember my dog Jasper when he died. He tried desperately to run from me. I held him in my hands when he died. Mm. I held him in my that's hands. That's hard stuff to live with, man. Dude, and, and, and the thing is, that, that dog, I had him as a puppy. I remember when you know his mother gave birth to him, I had to pull him out of the mother's womb because he, she had a hard time pushing him out. Man, you know, I, I hate to interrupt, guys. So it's a lot of love in this room right now. Hey. I, I just thought I'd go ahead and drop a tear and let you guys know that I love y'all, man. Yeah. And bring us down with all this down and, and stuff. And, Let's bring and, it back to good, to good stuff. Make it and, happy. And you know what, Quan? Yeah. You got the juice now, man. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, that's the way I am, dude. I'm, I'm a real person, dude. I'm saying that with whatever I represent myself as to people, this is who I am every day. You know what I'm saying? This is not, you know, a mask I pull on. If anything, I'm gonna be honest with you. You guys see the real me a lot quicker than the people that know me in person. Because I have a hard time dealing with people, you know, in person because a lot of them are fake. Like that you... Alexander O'Neill song. They're fake. Mm hmm. Oh, gosh. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and talk about the news. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually a good thing. And I, I heard a little story, Red Fox, and you kind of creamed your pants about this one. I, I did. I will readily admit this. You. I did. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's about time we get a console Mario RPG for the system. Well, I mean, there were leaks that there was going to be a Mario RPG, but I, I mean, I knew that they had the engine for it. And typically speaking, if Nintendo has the engine for something, they'll probably make it. But to the I mistake, that, the mistake that they made with this RPG was not following the formula that I wanted to see. And that I'm gonna say it again: to sit up here and see the Super Mario 3D World done in the form of Super Mario Legend of the Seven Stars. Um, well, that would be cool, but I think Square owns uh, some of no, that stuff. and there's a love between Square and Nintendo slowly growing back. Well, Japan, but that that's about money. That's not because yeah. they actually give a shit. They just no, they no, need wait. the money. Hello? No, I just said they need the money. That's it. They just need the money. They... It's about the money, honey. All right, well, we're going to go to a more... What the hell happened? I don't know. Grim Potts and Kenoshi. They'll be back. Well, next up, if you guys want to come back to this, you can. But what about that... Um. We're going to talk about something that Cage, I mean, Cage likes, and that's going to be that Mario Maker update. Woo! I see and people talking extra about me and Mario. This dude over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. He's probably, he's probably playing this shit right now. I heard the controller moving earlier. Yeah, he. I heard it. He was playing in the background. I heard him. An addict. Dude was taking light. Did y'all drop the update? Nah, that was last time. <laughs> hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, I hear it now. But Dude, I, let me tell you something right now. It, it, how they keep adding to these games, and you can see which ones they keep adding to, the ones that are pretty much more or less surprise hits. I'm pretty sure Nintendo thought that Mario Maker is going to make some money, but not nearly as much as it already has. Same thing with Splatoon. And these games are getting regularly ske scheduled updates, and I can't see it stopping anytime soon. I, I really can't. They're still making money off of this shit. Like, I've seen some people say, you know, well, you know they're working on Splatoon 2. I said they probably work on Splatoon 2 since Splatoon 1 dropped, to be honest. Um, and when they sold, like, the million that first month, I said, but they're going to continue to support this game because they don't want their momentum to die. As long as this game has momentum, it's going, they're going to uh, continue supporting it. Same thing with Mario Maker. Yeah, comes, I expect the same thing. Six point three courses made. Six point three million courses made. Yeah, I think you already made a good, you know, probably two made half of them yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only made fourteen, thank you. Dude, it's been so many times like I've seen this guy's videos clearing levels. I'm like, I wouldn't even attempt to clear this shit. And I look at the clear uh, stats of that level, it's like three million folks tried, only a hundred passed. Yo, 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 Dr. Feel Good. Take a look at my cam. All I got to say is a toast. Captain, Mar oh, what the hell, dude? All right, then. <laughs> you know, I, I, may, I may not be able to go that far, but, uh, you know, I got a few things I can probably show off. You probably don't even care about it, but I'm going to go. What you got to do, bro? Probably, nothing too good. Nothing too good. Probably, yeah. probably can't compare to that, but I'm going to go ahead and give you that. That coconut rum. Yeah. I hate coconut. I'm not showing anybody anything that I drink because what I drink is milk sop stuff compared to y'all. Talking Seagram Seven and Elijah Craig Bourbon. No, no, but I no, I will say this though. Just, just yo, yo, yo that, 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 large. I will, yo. I will go ahead and show this, and I recommended this to the Good Shepherd. Let me say this to the viewers um, and to you guys. I'm not the biggest brown liquor fan. I like alcohol in my drink, but I don't like to taste it where it's inundating. But went to a store. This guy that worked in there, I guess the way they work, um, you probably heard about it, like Total Wine or whatever. But they let the employees recommend something, you know, and promote it. He recommended this tequila liqueur. Mm. Keep in mind, I never had tequila. And I knew it was some strong shit, so I probably didn't want to have it in the first place. But it comes with 
vanilla, cinnamon, and I think there's something else he mentioned. Is that vanilla, cinnamon, and oh yeah, butterscotch. It's called Three Amigos. And like, you know, Eddie Griffin said, this shit is good. It has virtually no bite whatsoever. And the shit does go down smooth. So I will recommend you guys try it. I'm going to show you a little picture here. Everyone I've actually let sample it loves the shit. But three amigos. So you're saying that it is essentially very smooth, is what you're saying? Dude, it's it's extremely it. smooth, and I'm telling you, it's it's a tequila liqueur. But I'm telling you, it has virtually no bite to it. You can you can probably take like six or seven shots and not know what the hell you had, but then you may feel it afterwards. But you know what that is, is that Debra, good? And, listen, and, that reminds me of a good spice rum. When you get a good spice rum, a really good one, and you mix it with some like a, you know, a bourbon and then a splash of Coca Cola. I got you beat with that, man. I put some of this along with the hit of, uh, a little hint of spice rum and some eggnog this past winter. And oh, I was having nice. it, and the eggnog was Southern Comfort, you know, vanilla spice, and that shit, I had like two or three of those a day. Oh, so, yeah, I'm admitting that I probably had a drinking problem over the holidays. Yo, Not, you know, that happens, like that. dude. Look, 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 that happens, dude. A lot of people sit up here and criticize, but it, it ain't all that, you know what I'm saying? And it's the holidays. Yeah, there you go, dude, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Go toss Ooh. back a few, and that's how it is. My wife, she's all worried about me overdoing it. So, yeah, <laughs> she just woke up. But her thing is that Red Bull Cider. You ever do that Red Bull Cider? That sounds good. I ain't going to lie. Oh, my God. She had Red Bull Apple Cider, and I had some of her red Apple Cider. It is nice. Red Bull. Yo, and you follow that with a nice rum chaser. It is really good. Red Bull is gross. Yo, I did think. No, he is, said I, Red Bow, not Red Bull. Oh, Red Bow, okay. Red Bow, dude. What the hell? Oh. And I'm telling you something right now. She loved that mess. It's just like it goes down real smooth, dude. It's a nice apple cider. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of apple ciders that claim to sit up here and have a bite and don't have a smooth execution, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm a connoisseur, dude. I believe in drinking something that's going to be nice. And the thing is, I can go bum if I want to. I'll drink the cold 45 and whatever and go bum. But if I want to sit up here and do it right, I'll sit up here and follow some nice hot sake with some Sapporo beer. Okay. Well, um, let's see. What I was about to say, something that was unimportant. But, oh, here's what I was going to say. Um, so, we need to bring it back online. <laughs> um. Anyone here? Anyone here was disappointed with something at uh, this year's uh, this uh, not this year's this surprise because it was a surprise. E three. Uh, you mean the Nintendo Direct? Yeah, E three, Nintendo Direct, crazy stuff. Anyone Dude, surprised I'm, by I'm not, it? I'm not disappointed. You know why? Because I knew what it was for what it was, and I took it for that face value. Because the yeah. thing is, we're talking about a release window of three months. And if you look at it that way, you're not going to sit up here and be all souped up for the biggest guns to be coming out because you know the biggest guns are going to come out during the fall and during the winter. Exactly. So taking it for face value, taking it for face value, I believe they sat up there and pulled out just what was necessary. And here's the thing. I don't believe they pulled out everything they had available. I don't think they did either. You talking about on the direct? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, dude, you, you know the hell it like. Here, here is my opinion, and to the viewers, it is my opinion. I'm not saying this is fact, but I believe that 2014 was probably the best thing we were ever going to get, especially since now people are uh, trying to shy away from it. I understand 2015 was a letdown because 2014 was so good, but I think Nintendo knew they couldn't really outdo that because they didn't really have you know, enough stuff launching soon after to, you know, to kind of justify it. People okay. say, it, people say it's a, it, it was a bye-bye Wii U Direct. I said, I don't think that. I think they played their cards like a smart business does, which is 3DS is, making our, 3DS is making our money. 
let's be sure we keep 3S crowd happy. We know the Wii U is struggling right now, but at the exact same time, you know, we have put out great content. Great con- content is coming, but people just not buying the way we th- think they should. You but know, I the thing is going to be great. Dude, speaking to where you're coming from, and I agree totally, I think the mistake is that people sit up here and expect a killer direct when it comes to Wii U. And a Wii U is a platform that is either you like it or you don't. Yeah, that's about it. And the thing is, I'm going to be honest with you, I think it's a transition to what the NX is going to be. I believe the NX is going to take the tablet controller scheme and bring it to a whole nother level. I think their plan, and as Mr. T pointed out in one of his past videos, shout out to him, but the whole um, evolution versus revolution, where the Wii U is an evolved Wii. But, the and, NX. And, and, and even I saw the Wii U when I first saw it, I thought to myself, and this is before they actually mentioned the limitation to us. But I said, is that gamepad a way I can take my Wii U shit with me wherever I go? That's what I initially thought when I saw the gamepad, when they first revealed the shit. Then they let us know that it's like within the house, about 30 feet, you know, feet of range. But I think, like you say, the next console is going to take that concept and to a point where we won't need a separate 3DS anymore. It's going to be just... That pad is going to be both the portable and the home console. Exactly. And I believe the whole dual screen experience at the home is going to sit up here and allow for a new precedent when it comes to gaming. You know and what they, I'm saying? They, they've already even tested out. If you think about the small details and little shit they've been doing in between that we don't like take notice of, look what they did with Smash Brothers 4. And uh, one of the controller options is a fucking 3DS. I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I also think that the NX is going to be like a synthesis uh, device. I think because Nintendo likes using their old shit with their new shit. Um, I think that they will. Um, I think that basically, if you have like a 3DS, because the games they're releasing for the 3DS, they want to extend the life of that of that console. I mean, of that handheld. They they want to they want to they want that they want to, that to last as long as as uh, feasible for them right so I mean, I so mean you, you, let me get this right if I'm right about this you think they're gonna uh, the next console is going to also incorporate a way to where your 3ds uh, the 3ds itself the current console the current handheld can actually be integrated and or connect to the new console to be played on a home screen. Exactly. I think they're going to do that with both. I think they're going to do that with both of them. If you own a Wii U and a 3DS or either or both, I think you'll be able to latch it in. Like it'll tie in to the NX. They'll be like, look at all this shit you got, all these games and stuff. Boom, you play that. Shit. And that, that, not to not to mention that, if you think about, if you go back even about ten years, when it came to the GameCube. What was oh, one of the yeah. best features of the GameCube that people got to enjoy from and the handheld crowd? And Game Boy player. And it connected over there to the Game Boy Advance. And it allowed you to play those handheld games on a bigger screen. And the thing is, now that they sit up here and established a foundation to see that you know, fully pushed to fruition on a whole nother level, it would allow us to sit up here and have the experience of a handheld as well as a home console. Yeah, and now, done properly, not how exactly. Sony did with that uh, <laughs> Vita TV. And, and um, I, exactly. I, I think something else I'm, I think is going to happen, and I don't want to turn this into the NX, you know, no, you know what? Possibilities are okay. I think rumors are bullshit, so let me put that out there. Fuck the NX rumors. We're talking about possibilities right now. <laughs> you know how the Wii U, you could do, essentially, in most cases, two things simultaneously, right? Yes, sir. Now, of course, you they, they, they would suspend you know, the game or the app or whatever when you press the home button. But I always said, <clears throat> how cool would it be if I was playing on my Wii U while my wife was watching Netflix on the gamepad? That right now, there would be the sickness. It may require a little more RAM, a little more processing power, and I use the term power loosely. But imagine if you could do that. Imagine if – what if you can play two games at once? And I'll even give it a limitation. What if you can play maybe a downloadable title or maybe like a virtual console title 
and play a major, a main console title simultaneously. Two people, one machine, two different games. Mm-hmm. How yeah. sick would that shit be if, if, like, if for example, Neo wanted to play a classic Mario from a virtual console, and while I got the other controller, I'm up here actually playing like the next Smash Brothers or something. Oh, dude, 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 dude. Think about it this way. Imagine if uh, you got Nia and hmm. I'm just trying to sit up here and think here. Don't don't mind me. I'm clearing my head here. Shokyo and Nia deciding to sit up here and play two different games. You have her playing something like let's say Earthbound on the Virtual Console. Okay, Earthbound three. And Shokyo decided to sit up here and play the next iteration of, uh, let's say, Kirby. At the same exact time. On the same console. That would be cool. That would be cool. And, and I think Nintendo would pull it off. And I, I say, in, in my opinion, if you want to put, insert a realistic limitation... Because I don't believe everything is possible with GDDR, GDDR5, so let me just put that out there. But You don't worship it, at the temple of GDDR5? No, oh, I don't. <laughs> GDDR4 but all the way for me. I think, I think at the very least, you should be able to run an app like Netflix while playing a game, and I will say a physical game. It, ain't, it don't have to be ran from the hard drive, maybe it is, I don't care, but... If you can watch like a Netflix movie while another person plays a game, or vice versa, or someone's browsing an eShop with another person actually playing a game, that would be cool. Instead of you trying to, instead, instead of being like the Xbox One and PS4, which I always brag about, or you can run apps in the background. Like you don't need to run ten different apps in the background. Just one, you know, one or two is fine. That's you know, real. <laughs> Or how about my wife sitting over here watching Netflix while I'm over here playing the latest Zelda? What? You already got uh You got it early. Is this? Wow. Lucky. Lucky devil. They're sending cool. mine out tomorrow. I'm over here looking at my wife right now. She's enjoying her time on the tablet, doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? She owns a Wii U. My wife, she owns a Wii U. Separate from mine. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you got two of them as well. Yeah, I got That's two the, Wii U's in the house, dude. That is the Wii only U's. thing I don't like about the Wii U is that it would be cool if it had a universal type of um, like, account system. That account would allow. system that, like, okay, you own a Wii U, then if like you if you have an account registered on both things, you get like all that stuff is is shared. That would be the best I thing. Think, I think that's their eventual goal, to be honest with you, because I think Nintendo sees the sense behind that. But they don't want yep. to sit up here and copy word for word, verbatim, the exact style of another company. Because then not, but, Well, that wouldn't be sure. Nintendo. They, know, Nintendo wouldn't even, do that. They're not going to copy other people's stuff. But not even that. I think Nintendo, they do things the smart way. Because you look at Sony. Sony gets an idea. They throw everything into it without even thinking about what they're going to put on it, how they're going to support it, how they're going to optimize it. Look at look at VR. Look at the PlayStation Move. The Move. Yeah. Let's be honest. I will admit the Move is superior to the Wii Motion Plus. It is slightly better <laughs> in some way. Here's the problem. Sony had to, had a great idea. They made the damn device, but then. Now they they, don't use they, it. they were sitting there between the thumbs like, okay, so what can we do to make this stand out? Oh, that's right. Let's add this functionality to a few games. And it's like it's so limited. It's like you're not even taking advantage of your own damn device to it to the fullest. Nintendo, on the other hand, they come up with the game idea first. They design the game and its concept. Then they build the console and the console controller around that concept. Exactly. And then Nintendo. from there, they're supporting something from the jump. While people are bitching about, take out the gamepad. Do you not know that they built the damn console around the gamepad? Yeah. It's integral. You cannot get rid of the gamepad. Just because they added a few patches where you can start it up and, and browse the control menu using a pro controller, even still, you cannot still you still cannot do a lot of shit on the Wii U without that damn gamepad. 
Yeah, when I when I heard that Microsoft dropped support for the um for the for their uh, for the, for their Connect, I was like, oh, that's that's not good. And even the Smart Glass. Yeah, well, the Smart Glass was kind of like just them trying to copy what Nintendo was doing, but yeah, when that they died, that died in a year. Yeah, when they cut support for the Connect, because that was the that was the one thing that kind of made that system unique was the Connect, where you could like Xbox on Xbox. Stop sucking, Xbox. Xbox, go make me a sandwich. Oh, I'm joking about the whole make me a sandwich thing, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you can, gotcha. you can tell it to do stuff, and then they took that out. I'm like, well, your your machine is just a carbon copy of the other console on on the on, on the market. There's nothing unique about. I mean, except for a few games, and now that those games are coming to Windows, it's like. <laughs> You've really cool. destroyed my my enthusiasm. Well, I never had enthusiasm to buy an Xbox, but there are people who probably had enthusiasm to buy one, and you've destroyed that enthusiasm. Me, I admit. <laughs> but you know, since all that's going to come into uh, PC, it's like, uh, well, uh, what do I need this system for? Yeah, what do I need you for? Go sit down. Uh, what what Kingdom Hearts three? <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know why that game is coming to the Xbox. <laughs> like, I'm like, is the audience for King of Hearts on the Xbox? Because, because it's uh, Square Enix. <laughs> you know, they don't have they don't have a bit of sense anymore. Whatever. Uh, anyway, is Kingdom Hearts three ever coming out, or is that game just in limbo forever? Oh Lord, don't even get me started. We're not going to talk game. about Kingdom Hearts three. Uh. Well, I, what I will say is this: um, anyone, anyone getting, anyone think that uh, it was a smart idea to let the most dangerous alien creature in the the Nintendo universe get its hands on a mech? Uh, was that a smart idea? Are we gonna regret this? <laughs> this this result. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Uh, Are we dead? Is life going to end for all of us? <laughs> Hey, I mean, it's another tradition of Kirby, so it's like, woo, go. <laughs> I, I think this is. Guys, I told you guys before, I'm not, I'm not really a fan of the, uh, the more non-traditional stuff like Canvas Course and Rainbow Curse and uh, Epic Yarn and stuff like that. So. I, I liked Epic Yarn. Epic Yarn is. I mean, I know this is gonna sound a little bit sexist, but I don't care. Epic Yarn is a great girlfriend game or parent game. It's a good game to play for people who aren't good at playing uh, video games. Although, if you want to play that game hardcore, it can get a little rough. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, and also, uh, does, does Final Fantasy XV have a release date? <laughs> <laughs> uh... That's like asking if Final Fantasy VII is coming out this year. That's like asking um, if uh, that's like asking for that dude who always claims that his girlfriend he has a girlfriend but she lives in uh, in Canada and that's why you never see her. That's how it feels to t think about that. I mean, you know, look, I'm interested in this game. I'm actually am interested in Final Fantasy XV, but. Okay, oh, you know what, Red? I'm not going to punish you any further, okay? I understand this is hard for you to talk about. Yeah, it is. You know, you, you, I will allow you to go to therapy to, you know, to get this out of your system. But I will go ahead and bring up something that, you know, that is also, you know, out there in the wild. And it's, it, it's a positive note, depending on how you look at it. Young Conquer. Oh, oh, oh God. God. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if you guys read the arc that I posted. <laughs> oh, sorry, but, I just had to. I had to puke. I'm sorry. But the people that showed the young conquer, <laughs> I'm gonna read this because this shit is too yo, damn yo, yo, funny. Yo, you but how they assaulted this damn man. I'm sorry. This, this reviewer, <laughs> this reviewer, whatever, he went. So ham on how this thing looks. Um, listen Yo, to this. It, it's, I, from the, it, it, it's from the birds. Okay. Dude, 
I got to be back, you know, for this. I, I, I'm going to another podcast to recover. You brought up Young Conquer. That's a very sore spot for me. I mean, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, you, you done hit a very sore spot. And, you know, me, I'm not, norm- I'm not normally one of the ditch. But I'm a ditch, and I'm gonna come back because you mentioned this. Oh, <laughs> Look, at least oh no! Oh at no, dude! Seriously, out. at least hear this out. Is it, it's isn't this be, just a tip? It, it's this? gonna it's gonna make you laugh. It's okay. The Conquer series returns this year with Young Conquer, but fans may not recognize a squirrel. The new adventure, which will be packaged with the Microsoft Hololens developers kit, takes place in the player's living room. The character runs across floors, tables, and walls to collect coins and fight enemies. And he looks like a Hanna-Barbera villain recovering from a cocaine bender. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, again, I, I already know the press release. You are really ruining my perception of Conqueror. Oh, God. Okay, what, I'll, ready, I'll ready, stop ready right there. Do that? <laughs> Wait, isn't, isn't this just a tech demo that they're showing to show... Man, this is Microsoft. If this was Nintendo, I'd say, hey, but it's Microsoft. Come on, man. Exactly. Microsoft is taking this serious. I don't think think it's really anything to complain about because it just looks like a tech demo for the... Oh, Lord. Man, this is Microsoft. They're trying to... Look, man, they spent... How much did they spend to acquire Rare? Too much. From Nintendo, like a huge sum of money? Look, Look, they're trying to get... Look, they're trying to get their money back. They like, look, man, we look, we spent all this damn money. We gonna get something out of it. Shit. Yeah, well, yeah, I did. Ugh. Why is he even like uh, that squirrel from Ice Age? Dude, I'm gonna be back in a few. Ugh. <laughs> taste in my mouth. Ugh. Don't leave, Quan. All right, I won't leave. But oh my god, yo, seriously, do not mention this game. Ugh. What, it's it not a game. It, 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 it's basically a tech demo. Exactly, <laughs> dude. It's not even a game. You're right. You know, it may be a tech demo, but I tell you this much: I guarantee, you, knowing Microsoft, they're probably gonna turn this shit into a game. Oh God, I said I'm going. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm regurgitating. Yo, I already regurgitated. I already puked like two times now <laughs> watching it. I was like, come on, come on. Oh, man. poor Conquer. Look, all I'm gonna Why? say is that. I've said this before. Uh, Rare, Microsoft, just just let Rare die. Just, just let it go. No, just... Red, Dare, let Rare die or sell it back to Nintendo? No, they're <laughs> never going to sell it back to Nintendo. And frankly speaking, seeing the quality of people working at Rare nowadays, I don't think they could qualify to work at Nintendo. It's so sad. Oh, God. How the mighty have fallen. They used to be awesome. They ain't awesome no more. Sure. Oh, Lord. Could be worse. Could have been worse. Yeah, they could be Konami. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, no, I mean, they, 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 no, when I say could be worse, could no, have, they could they be Bullfrog. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, they could have been no, no, no. yes, yes, yes. Sancho Kazooie for this gen. <laughs> well, let, let me let me ask they you this: what's, what's, what's worse? Kazooie. What's worse, Young Conquer or the Promise of Conquer in that damn um, game? Project Sparks. Had. Yes. Oh, well, God. I'm gonna keep it real. Project he, he, Sparks, the the Conquer that was in Con- Project Sparks looked like a slightly cuter version of Conquer from Conquer's Bad Fur Day. He really he looked a, like a slightly cuter version of that but, Conquer. No, Maybe I'm, say, like, I, I, I'm comparing two things that really should be compared. I'm comparing to the fact that they lied to you or led you on with Project Spark, and this is actually them uh, intending on creating a game around Conquer. Oh, yeah, God. if they're creating a game using Young Conquer, uh, frankly speaking, everyone needs to be fired hard. They need to be fired so hard their grandparents get fired. <laughs> like their grandparents back in depression age, you're like, oh, baby, I got fired. What happened, Grandma? You see, somebody did something so stupid it broke the space time continuum and fired me. Oh God, dude. Yo, seriously. Ugh, I'm in pain here. My poor Conker, dude. Seriously, <laughs> I'm in such you know, pain you know right what's now. So funny? I don't have a copy of Conker. Dude, so, my Conker. I, 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 I thought I thought I would look online and say, you know what? I like I have a whole bunch of like those little movie trading companies nearby me. I can get to one in roughly ten minutes in either direction dude, I drive. Not for nothing. I said, well, but let me see if I can find one online. But they're like four, five hundred bucks for a copy online. Dude, not for nothing. Emulate Conker. 
please emulate Conquer. And I, I normally don't endorse emulation. Emulate Conquer, and you'll see how they ruined him. Yeah. No, I, know, I, I played the game. I love the game. Oh, my God. But I just don't have my old copy. Dude, not for nothing. Listen, listen. The Grand Opus, the Great Mighty Pool. Yep. Can never, ever, 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 ever be viewed the same when you see Microsoft's version of it. And Rock Solid. Oh, my God. Rock Solid. Such a great song. Oh, my Lord. There's so you many songs. You're about so to many. throw up, man. Yo, it's sick, Because dude, Microsoft, I mean, Microsoft destroyed a great franchise with their bullshit. Thank you, because I mean, dude, they took the word for daily yo and for you know forgot the word fellatio. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Yeah, because now, because the name was the that name, necessary, Quan? Was that necessary? No, no, no. Seriously, in in Conquer's Bad Fur Day, there's a part when you go to the prehistoric world where you have to get into this club in order to like get to a certain point. And there's a code word, and it's it's not it's it's not it's not Fidelio. it's not it's not fellatio. It's fidacia or fidacio or fidacio. Fidelio. Yeah, but the way the guys say it, like Congress, like what? 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 Fellatio? The guys like no, fidacio. <laughs> Congress, like okay, that's the that's the password. And he goes inside, and then he like you know he does what he needs to do because it's a, it's a platformer, but. I mean, my point is that Conquer is so irreverent. That's what makes it such a good game. But then Microsoft got their hands on it, and they uh, why, why did thing. they why did they censor it? Well, dude, they true. miscensored it in so many ways. It's ridiculous, dude. Because Microsoft didn't know. Because Microsoft bought Microsoft bought Rare and didn't know what in the hell to do with them. Okay, let's just keep it real. They did not they know only, what the hell. They to only do with bought Rare to, to take them from Nintendo because Nintendo would have made. A rare into today's retro. platinum, basically. No, they would have made it into retro. The yeah. w- retro is now. Well, I mean, they also thought that they were going to get Donkey Kong. <laughs> oh, that's the main reason. Yeah. Dumb ass. <laughs> Thank if, you. If they thought they were going to get Donkey Kong, they are they are too dumb to be in business. And now you know why I will never ever accept Microsoft as a console manufacturer because they don't have the brain for it. Ah, yeah. Well, let me bring up something more positive. Since, you know, uh, 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 here's something. Gun Vault 2. No, that'll work. Yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is pretty positive. Uh, when is Mighty Number no. 9 coming out, considering NT Creation is uh, making it? You <laughs> damn troll. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, look, look. I'm glad they're making Gun, Mighty Gun Vault 2. But aren't they supposed to be making Mighty Number no. 9? Exactly. Why the hell would you bring up something that makes people just as salty as Federation Force in 2015? Look, I'm yeah, not salty. Federation I didn't. I didn't. Future. I didn't back that Kickstarter with those con. With those con. With those con <laughs> people. I, I'm not salty. I didn't. Huh. I didn't spend money no, with those people. No, no, Isn't there? Okay. Is, is, listen, what's there another listen, game listen, like listen. Red Something? Hold on, making? hold on, hold on. If you want to get salty, let's talk about the sequel to Eternal Darkness. Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, look, on a more positive note, a positive note, although it's kind of trolling, um, <laughs> Xbox, you know, Microsoft talked about more backwards compatibility this week. And oh, uh, they, of, oh. course, they, of course, they came with a funny number saying that uh, Xbox One owners to play Xbox 360 games 30 million hours. And I was like, that's great. But they really boils down to roughly about two hours per person, you know, or, or per Xbox One. This is roughly about 15 million of in the market. So that's not really anything to brag about because I'm pretty sure even Neo here has probably played more than about a good 200 hours of classic retro games on his Wii U alone. Can we just keep it real that Microsoft has no idea what the hell they're doing? <laughs> well, 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 I will give them this. And at least I can say that as of right now, or at least over the past six months, they they know they're doing whatever they're doing. It's a lot better than what Sony's doing. Mm-hmm. I will say that it's mm-hmm. a lot better than what yeah, Sony. Yeah, but the only reason the only reason the PS4 is selling well is because Microsoft shat the bed when they when they released. 
the 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 X the Xbox One. Like had Microsoft had not done Matrix um, signed off on some of those things they were endorsing with the Xbox One, you would have the Xbox you would have the Xbox One at like twenty million, the PS4 Sony, at twenty million. Sony, Sony, give me a brave Fensa Musashi sequel and I'll be happy. Yeah, and, and not like that sequel you did on the PS2 that had nothing to do with the original, like a real yeah, sequel. Exactly, a real sequel. And yeah. I mean, nothing like what happened with uh, Chrono Cross. Oh, God. Yeah, we Chrono Cross isn't Chrono even Cross. a sequel to Chrono Trigger. That, that mess makes me nauseous every time I think about it. I mean, good grief. I mean, that was a bastard. Dude, yeah. it was a bastardization of uh, Radical Dreamers, let's be honest. And it wasn't even... I mean, it just was bad. I'm sorry. It was just it, bad. It, it was bad. You guys they tried bucket. to shoot for it. They tried to you, shoot for you, you guys are, are, are bigger ponies in that damn game we saw on the direct today. <laughs> What's it's not true. Admit, Look, but, it's just... I remember when these games were good, and to see someone take an awesome game and turn it into garbage is not cool. I don't like that. That exactly, bothers me. dude. I mean, there's nothing wrong for you know calling a spade a spade. Come on, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that Chrono Chrono Cross. It probably it would have been a decent game if they wouldn't have called it Chrono Cross. Exactly, because if they they called listen, it, listen, know, listen, listen. They shoehorned the name Chrono just to sit up here and market it better. Yeah, this is just some it shit we made up. It wasn't originally a Chrono game. Period. You do know that, right? You do realize that. Yeah, I'm aware it. of that. I... No, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm talking to Doctor Feelgood here. I'm yeah, saying I, you, I know. it was shoehorned into the Chrono franchise because it had because literally like the opening of that game. Okay, Luca gets killed by some punk. I'm like, this is the chick who helped defeat Lavos. You think some little punk like Lynx could kill a lady who helped kill Lavos? Seriously, you. seriously. Seriously, really? You're gonna go with that for your story? And the thing okay. is, listen, listen. After they kill her, they still brought her back as a chibi form. Yeah, but that was. I don't even. Chrono Cross to me is just embarrassing, and I don't even talk about it. It's you know, it's kind of like how Nintendo doesn't talk about those Zelda CDI games. <laughs> Yo, that's how it feels, dude. That's how it feels. I don't talk about. I don't talk about Chrono Cross. Whenever I talk about Chrono, I talk the about Chrono Cross. Yeah, hey, the Wand of Gamelon. Was a very good game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm sorry. I can't even play along with that. No, no. The wand of Gamelon <laughs> was terrible. <laughs> oh, oh my God. That 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 was painful. I actually taught my parents into renting a, a Zelda uh, Philips CDI and playing those games. And my God, dude, I'm that was so the hungry. worst seventy five so dollars I ever I wasted on my parents' money ever. I'm so hungry I could eat an Octorok. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> wow. I haven't been playing them. Were they really that bad? Dude, yes, they did you were hear really what that bad. Did you, did you hear what I just quoted? That's a line from one of the games. Exactly. It's it's terrible. Like literally, I, so I could eat an Octorok. And you know what the worst thing is? Is that Phillips had the nerve to sue Nintendo about um the Wii. And I'm like, Nintendo should have sued your asses about those CDI games you made, you bastards. Those things were terrible. You know, I, I would buy them for comedic effect just to yeah. show somebody, you know, how bad things could have gotten. You know what I bought at my local mom and pop? They had this. They actually had this. Super Mario, uh, sorry, Superman 6, uh, 64. Oh God! I bought it just for oh, just Lord. for comedic effect. I bought it. I was like, you know what? Oh Lord! I did. I I, I I bought Superman sixty four. I have not played it. I have it. Dude, just dude, dude, dude. For... I, I I got a game that's kind of worse than that as far as an RPG. Quest sixty four. Aiden's Chronicles. I have that game. I've actually beaten it. It's not that bad. Yeah, come on, dude. It's, come on, it's please, not screw that me. bad. It is terrible. It's not that the story is actually pretty good. Uh, the execution was horrible. The execution is horrible, but the story, like, okay, the unbeatable enemies in the battles where you have to lose, but if you don't fight them right, you die forever. Mm -hmm. it, like that's not cool. But 
I mean, the overall story is pretty cool. The 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 story mechanic where your character can learn all the magics in the game. You're so generous. Cheap. You're so generous. Well, because I, I bought that game and I I've beaten it so many times. I like I know it by heart. It's ridiculous. So of course you're generous with it. But that game was terrible. <laughs> It's oh. not that bad. It's terrible. Oh my god, it's so terrible. It's not look look listen. It's better than Chrono than Chrono than Chrono Cross. <laughs> oh Chrono Cross. It's better oh than Chrono god. Cross. The only thing I could give Chrono Cross was the soundtrack. Uh, it's still not as good as the original though. No, but I, I agree with you there, but the soundtrack was very decent. You can't you can't beat that guy. Everyone thought that uh, what's his name that Nobu Uematsu did that music, but no, it was another guy who did it. He was that dude was on point. Uh-huh. He or he needs they need to, they need Nick Square. Why can't you go back to those days? Oh, I miss their old music and the way they handle it. I remember listening to the very first time the intro to Final Fantasy VI. Mm. Oh, with I'm Biggs so and Wedge. Yeah, there you go. That was the intro. That that whole thing with the music was just so beautiful, you know. Bigs and Wedge. Cause I they, do cause, I love the Star Wars reference. Yeah, you know they're huge Star Wars fans. Uh, well, and that wasn't them. That was actually their translators. But still, it was awesome. Take loosely. How about that Battlefront? <laughs> Star oh, Wars Battlefront. <sighs> 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 You know what? All you, all you guys are pissing and moaning, but I bet you all bought it too. <laughs> no, actually, I, I didn't. I, 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 I did buy not buy that game. Actually, dude, I'm, I'm, look, 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 as sure as you can hit me up on my cell, I didn't buy Battlefront. Yeah. I would not buy Battlefront. It, like literally, if if I was desperate to play a game and it was the only game available, I would not buy Battlefront. Like, dude, the if it was the only game available and I were to play it, I would play something like Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, one or two. Yeah, and I'll play two, the unedited version with like half the game is missing before I'd play. Um, this game. Oh, the like, restoration project. The restoration project was pretty good, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But even without the resurrection, the restoration project, I'd rather play that than uh, EA. Because as soon as they said EA was making, I was like, Dude, well. not for nothing. Not for nothing. Listen. <laughs> Dude, not for nothing. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Yeah, for a lot too. I'm, I'm not trying to bring up bad memories. But if you had to choose between. Chrono Cross and E.T. Oh, God. <laughs> um, you know, I'd play, I would rather play, because I've beaten E.T. I would rather play E.T. Because I've beaten E.T. I've, I've played it and beaten it. I would rather play E.T. on the um, on on the Atari 2300. 2600. Yeah, 2600, sorry. 2600 than play... Um, Chrono Cross, and the reason why is because ET, despite how horrible that game is, is still playable. It actually has makes logical sense. Okay, um, whereas mm. Chrono Cross <laughs> makes no fucking sense. It the the big thing no with Chrono Cross was the big mistake was the way they handled the characters from the original series compared to how they were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm yeah, saying. That whole TV no representation of them, yeah, just kind of threw everything off. It really did. It kind of threw yeah. the whole game off. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it real. Chrono Cross had too many had too many characters. It had way too many like and and like some of those storylines weren't as like like yes, Chrono Trigger only had seven characters, but those storylines were so tight with those characters that. They had a reason to do what they were doing. Some of those characters in Chrono Cross, like some guy walks in eating a ham sandwich. You want to come save the world? Sure. Let me just if you help me get another ham sandwich. Okay, you can be part of the crew. That's basically how it felt with Chrono Cross at a certain point. Dude's like, like oh, man, if you find me some mustard to go with this ham sandwich, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, uh, what what. How do you how do you play that game with so many characters? How do you keep the story together? You don't. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you don't. You don't. You, you basically, you play Chrono Cross. Like, okay, if, if you never played Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross is playable because you don't know the how they bastardized the original characters and how they try to make links to Chrono Trigger with that game. But if you played the original Chrono Trigger, you play Chrono Cross and you're like, what the hell is this shit? What did you do? What well, there's did you one do? Good, there's, one good, uh, there's one good demon fact about Chrono Cross. Music. Still not, not as Chrono good as the original. Still, good. still yeah. not as good as the original. Let me put it this way. In the original Chrono Trigger, when you go to the Millennium Fair and... and, 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 and uh, yeah, I forgot the princess's name. Marl. And Marl is kid is 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 kidnapped. Well, she's not kidnapped. She goes into the, 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 the time portal and like Chrono picks up her necklace and they starts playing that iconic music and he gets zapped into the time portal and it plays Chrono's theme, you know. That is that is some badass stuff. Like when Frog comes in and he like he gets the in the PS I'll give the PS one version this much. They have that cutscene where Frog uh powers up the mass unit and cuts them like cleaves a mountain in two almost. Some badass shit. I mean, how can no one in Chrono Cross can compare to those badass moments? They can't. Uh, and they give your main character, whatever I forgot his name, a shitty master ma master mune. I'm like, how are you gonna bastardize the mass mune with this shit? Get out of here. Go go sit down. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for you. Go sit down. <laughs> you have failed me for the final time. <laughs> but what? No one ever. No one ever. You don't get the Darth Vader reference. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> you failed just... me for the last time. You failed me for the last time. But sir, I just started working yesterday. <laughs> but I'm the janitor. I just you spilled some water. Too bad. <laughs> Force choke for the lose. No. He failed me for the last time. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a, I'm a Star Wars. I'm I'm a Star Wars and a Star Trek fan. I'm I'm sorry. I, I love both of them. Star, Star Trek movies. Do you think they bastardized those movies? Or? Um, they're pretty bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that much. Are you talking about the J.J. Abrams one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty. Oh God, I'm not. Even, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I knew it. Dude, not for nothing. Listen, the old Star Wars and Star Trek. They they fit within the realms of their universes respectively, and the way they're done now, it seems like the modern day sensibilities of writing kind of sat up there and took it away from the scope of the franchise originally intended. You know, they're trying too hard to make it fit into a new age. Like they're trying way too, they're trying too hard. I mean, like okay, like Star Trek. Star Wars is a fantasy. I know people are going to get mad, and they're going to be like, no, it's, it's science fiction. No, no. Here, I I'll prove it, okay? Take a step back, withdraw all the spaceships and all that stuff, and I'll tell you the story of Star Wars using fantasy mythos and nothing changes. You have white wizards and black wizards, and they use their, their, their magic staves, which they can activate to cause a magical blade to come out of them. The good wizards use uh, blades that are made out of blue light and green light and white light. The bad wizards use orange light and red light. And uh, there's also a rogue who has an airship called the Millennium Falcon. His, his right-hand man is a giant man beast called Chewbacca. And there's a princess, and she lives on a planet, or not a planet, she lives in a kingdom that was obliterated by the evil flying fortress called the Death Star, created by the evil dark wizards. I mean, it, it's it's very it's not hard to remove. It's fantasy. It's fantasy. It's fantasy with a science fiction coat of paint. Star Trek is science fiction. Okay, it's like you know, like you notice how it seems like all the women in Star Wars just like they they give birth and they die giving birth, or ha their half their kids turn out to be evil bastards. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I had to live in a future, give me Star uh, Star Trek, because I mean, if I lose a hand, they can grow me a new hand and put it on there. If I get a disease, they can save my ass. You know, Star, Star, Star Trek 
Look, you you lose a limb, you just you should you SOL. Not true, dude. You know how many times like look at look what happened with Captain Picard when he lost his heart. They gave him a new one. Thank you. <laughs> Hush you. They fixed him. They gave him a new one. They look that man is captain of the Enterprise, the flagship of the fleet. Dude, and he dude, lost dude, the dude. heart. Yo, and what happened to Worf when he lost spinal, you know, vertebrae? They gave him a new one. They 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 healed his ass. They, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, and he wanted to sit up here and kill himself. Remember? Yeah, but they look, they saved it. Look, listen, I, put me in Star Trek. They have better medicine. <laughs> they can keep my ass alive longer. <laughs> look, I remember seeing that episode in the first, in the beginning where they had old Bones McCoy, Admiral McCoy, old man up there. Look, if this his old ass that long lived shit, I, I know they can save my ass up in there. I ain't look. I ain't. I ain't taking my ass to Star Wars. People running around, badass kids killing folks, cutting off oh folks' Lord. hands and Dude. shooting people. I ain't. No man. I ain't. I ain't messing around with that shit. Damn. Star Wars is scary, dude. I don't care what anybody say. That is some scary mess right there, yo. I am Luke Skywalker. You are the last. There is another Skywalker. <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Yoda. <laughs> you could have given me this information last time I was here. <laughs> you were too... I would have given... I told you I would have if you hadn't stolen my flashlight you had. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm totally... I'm, I'm looking forward to all these games except for Mario and Sonic at Rio because... To hell with uh, so look. It's Mario is great, but Sonic has just been breaking bad lately. He needs to go. He needs to go clean himself up. He needs to go oh, to rehab. Poor, poor, poor Sonic. Yo, Get his stuff together. Sonic. Yeah, he needs to. Uh, he, he he needs to be taken out like old Yeller. You know, he just needs to. Oh Lord, you told no, about him to the die. Back. He just needs to. And look, he doesn't need to die. He just needs to get his shit together. Okay. Yo, know, by the way, my wife is getting awfully jealous of you guys. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, i you know, this thing's gone on long enough. the The direct was awesome. I'm gonna bounce, but the direct was awesome. Um. Uh, hey, red, 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 red. Yeah. Are Are you gonna get a copy of Van Helsing or uh, you know, I have like Van Helsing. Or Star I have Van Helsing. Or, okay, then get, okay, and get Starbound too. I have Starbound on Steam. So then, guess what? You and I can play. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'm free on the weekends to play like heavy duty multiplayer games. Can't do it during the week. But so the, there you go, dude. Don't... Dude, dude, hit me up. You already got me on Steam. Okay. And uh, Kenoshi, Doctor Feelgood, Neo, feel free to add me. Sure, no problem. And um, like I I'll said, about... yeah. peace out, y'all. Yeah. See you guys. Yeah, I'll see. You. Talk to you guys later. Then you guys are gonna head out. Peace. Yo, I'm about to head out to see who's next sitting up here and hoping to, you know, hosting a podcast. And just... <laughs> it's too... yeah, uh, Doc. You know where I live, so I probably will not be going anywhere tomorrow, but still, I got, I, I still got to run the business from the house, so peace out, y'all. All right, Doc. peace. All right. Hi, man. We leaving. <laughs> yeah, people, uh... okay. yeah, the, uh, man just left, Kenosha about to leave, Quan about to leave, so... Right, we'll yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. All right. Started later than I wanted to, but it was at the request of somebody else. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but I'm glad to have you guys on, especially you, Quan, man. Uh, I'm glad you could make it. Uh, it's been a while. I'm glad to have you back among the rest of us, and I'm hoping it's for good. Um, oh, so. <laughs> We'll go ahead and give you sign-offs, and we'll wrap this thing up. Yo, right. this is Quan Manchu doing my thing. As I always say, whatever's clever. Uh, Neo Player Gamer here. Uh, thanks Playing for Mario me. Maker. And... Well, you know. <laughs> this is Kanashi Abominito here saying, if you throw stones at glass houses, make sure you're not living in one yourself. Damn. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I can top that, but and I'm your humble host, Doctor Feelgood. 
Um, I want to thank the viewers for tuning in. Uh, I'm sorry if you had questions I didn't get to them. We started much later than uh, I originally anticipated. But be sure to tune in next week. Thank you all for stopping by and um, fuck their parties. Yeah. You know I had to do it.